Hello, guys, and uh, thank you for coming here. I want to talk to you about female narratives and uh, why we should play them, and maybe also a little bit of what actually I mean when I say a female narrative. First, though, disclaimers. I will be referring to men and women, female and male, during this talk. I'm then only talking about the characters and not the players. That means that whatever situation I am mentioning, I'm talking about characters in gender and not players. This means that I will not talk about non-binary people, for example, and I'm sorry about that, and I don't mean to close them out of this, this discussion, but I only have 10 minutes, so I will need to narrow it down. Also, this is a very short version of a talk I made together with two wonderful people called Alma Elovson and Rosalind Götberg, who couldn't be here. We will do one of the LARPs uh, that I have coming up together, then Utan Synd, which is about the witch trials. Here is a beautiful promo picture. So, what is a female narrative then? Well, an easy way of answering that question would be the history and how it actually relates to female experiences. Often when we do LARPs, even if it's in a gender equal fantasy setting, we are talking about the male experiences that has influenced that building of the world. For example, a classic fantasy game will center around the soldiers and not the spouse at home waiting and hoping that their loved ones will come home. Another thing that would create a female narrative is stories or subjects that we often classify as girly, like, you know, a rom-com or finding true love. And I will try to touch upon why finding true love is a very interesting subject to LARP around, if you look at it from an historical point of view. Why should we bother then? Well, I could probably talk 10 minutes just about this, but I will try to make it snappy. Uh, representation of different narratives than the common one, as I touched upon earlier. And also for me, as a person who identify as female, I enjoy going to historical LARPs and seeing a version of what my life might have been had I lived in that time period. I will not get that in a gender equal LARP that only centers around male narratives. Another point is, of course, to learn where we come from and it can help us to reflect on the gender norms that surrounds us today, because the system we live in is built upon a history of other cultures and other histories. Finally, and this is maybe my main point that I want to drive home, narratives surrounding female experience are super cool and interesting. And you who usually play male narratives at LARPs, take an interest in the female narratives surrounding you. If you go to historical LARPs and play historical gender roles, you will very often end up in a situation where people playing the male experience, which is most likely the main plot of the LARP, don't really see or understand all the interesting and intricate things that the female narrative has given the female uh, uh, casted players. So take an interest. But, I hear, women had no power. It will be super boring to play a woman in a historical LARP. That's not really true. And I can't explain in all the ways women had power, because it will vary from different time periods and cultures, but in almost any uh, historical context, no matter how patriarchal the society, women have always had some sort of informal power. And it's your job as a LARP designer to find out what that informal power was and how you can help your female players experience that during your LARP. But it will just turn into a romantic costume LARP. Well, now we're coming back to what I was talking about earlier. A romantic story doesn't necessarily need to just be a romantic story. To say that, uh, for example, Regency LARP is all about finding true love and therefore super boring and sort of like girly, is to ignore the fact that a Regency woman would be probably deemed to live her life poor on the streets or in a house for unwed mothers if she didn't find the right man with the right kind of economical and social stability. So finding true love could in reality be the story of survival if that is the story you choose to focus on. LARP with historical gender roles will just end up being miserable and sad. Well, as someone who comes from the Nordic LARP tradition, I actually sort of enjoy misery and sadness <laughs> at LARPs. 
but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Uh, for example, 1942, that uh, Tieko was talking about earlier, uh, I played that game. I was a housewife uh, helper. I was standing in a kitchen for 80% of my LARP cooking with way too little ingredients, and I had a blast. It wasn't misery at all, because I got to experience a narrative and a story that was meaningful to me and my own personal experiences. And when me and Alma and Rosaline were talking about sort of like what different kind of settings could you do that centers around female narratives that isn't misery or sadness at all, we came up with several ideas. Lesbian Sapfo party, anyone? <laughs> That's not boring, <laughs> I think. <laughs> And also, for example, Suffragette, another LARP I have coming up, so please do sign up, uh, which is a LARP about the suffragette movement and about the women who fought for our right to vote today. That is really not a misery LARP, it's a LARP about sisterhood and coming together and politics. So choosing what sort of setting you want to make your LARP in will actually, actually change what kind of feeling you will have. It sounds kind of self-explanatory when I say it, right? But yeah, there you go. Finally though, I guess I could use some unconventional female character in my LARP. Like Sean Dark, for example. Well, this point unfortunately sort of like cancels out the point of the female narrative. These exceptions in history have existed and it's important to remember them. But making a LARP about like war and then just throw in some women dressed up as men to play the soldiers will actually just enhance the male narrative. And the point of this talk is to talk about the female narrative instead. So do by all means remember the unconventional women, but don't forget the conventional ones, because their stories are the stories that never get told by Hollywood, or at least not very often. And those stories matter as well. How then? It sounds super, super hard. Well, there's several things you can do. The first thing I want to remind you of is the informal power that I mentioned earlier. In any society, people who doesn't have formal power has found ways to get around that. And we can do the same thing in game. One example would be to contrast two different uh, LARPs with different points. So for example, in Bridal Price, a LARP about the strict patriarchal honor culture, it makes sense that women will go to their husbands and ask for permission before they go for a walk with their friend. The point of the LARP is doing that. In Legion, a LARP about a bunch of soldiers and their wives walking through Siberia, it doesn't necessarily make sense that wives has to ask their husbands every single time they want to walk along in the big line to talk with their friend. And those historical women, they wouldn't have done that either. So use the historical context and the informal power structures that was active then when you designed your historical gender roles. And then, of course, communicate how the design will limit the players and the characters. 1942 again. I was perfectly content to be stuck in the kitchen. Had I not known that that was what I was supposed to do, I would probably have had a really boring LARP. To communicate in what way you as a player will be inflicted in your freedom contra what uh, freedom your character m might have or have not is really, really important. And then, of course, after you communicated this, you need to workshop it a lot because we all come there as players with our own preconceptions of what the gender roles are in a certain context. And if we don't get along and have the same vision of how we're going to do this together, we will end up with 90 different ways of doing these gender roles. And if you as an organizer don't tell them how to do it, they will go by what they learned from Hollywood. And that is most likely not historically correct or fun for the female characters. And to do that, of course, you need to research. And this is super important, especially when you want to do historical LARPs, but also when you want to just create new gender roles to be able to tell a narrative that centers around femininity. You need to know how women adapted to different situations in the context that you are going to portray. And you know, what need to know what kind of unique freedoms women had that men might not have had during that time period. For example, in the 17th century, 
women had a lot of informal power in Sweden because most of the men were out fighting. So women could sign their uh, husband's legal papers, for example. Find out that through research and you will be able to let your female players have the same freedom in game. Female stories matter. It's our job to tell them. Thank you.